Hey folks, this is Vent with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Tunnel of Doom. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about 14 bucks. So, what is Tunnel of Doom? Well, it's an action rogue light hybrid that mixes tower defense with melee and ranged combat gameplay, according to the Steam Store page. I take issue with the word rogue light. Rogue light implies permanent progression, and there really isn't anything like that. Um, in games like, I don't know, um, Rogue Legacy, you will continuously upgrade your town with the gold that you earn and become more and more and more powerful over time. Plenty of games do that. This game does not. Um, at the end of every run, you're awarded maybe gold or a relic or something like that that will help you in your next run, but there's nothing permanent. There's no, like, skill tree to apply points into. So, I don't know. I, I don't agree with the whole rogue light thing. But it is a rogue-like in the sense that you're going to be jumping into a run, trying to complete it, and then, well, if you win, great. If not, then you just simply try again. Whenever you do beat the game, uh, you unlock a hard mode and an endless mode that you can fool around in. The general gameplay is something like this. You are, I guess, a wife uh, that is, you know, there's this, there's this mine that's collapsed, and, you know, you're the wife on the outside, you know, my husband's in there, kind of thing, and there's a whole bunch of people in there that need to be saved, so the mayor's like, all right, you can go in, but I have to warn you, danger, blah, blah, blah. So, you go into this mine, and it's broken up into sections, sort of like in Smash TV, if you happen to remember that game. Um, so, typically, you're given the option to enter build mode, and then you start the wave. Um, basically, enemies come out at you, and you have to defeat all of them before you can move on to the next room. And the room is, or the, the map is fairly big. I and mean, we're talking like 8x8, eight 10x10, eight, ten ten, something like that. And each map is, from what I understand, random every time you play. So you're not going to get a different layout. Uh, so there's a bit of luck in this game and getting the right rooms to appear in the right order, whatever. Um, so yeah, you're going to be setting up turrets. Now, to be fair, when I say turrets, it in the most in the beginning it's mostly turret. <laughs> you don't have enough resources yet to really get a full complement of turrets. It's not like your standard tower defense game where, you know, you're going to be putting down 10 to 15 turrets and watching people or watching monsters go from point A to point B and you just have to kill them. It's nothing like that. It's more along the lines of you're putting down one or two turrets you can put down barricades if you want or move things around the room so that you can protect your turrets. But primarily, my experience has been uh, set up stuff, spawn the wave, watch monsters come into the room, and then run around like a mad woman. Well, in this game, you're a woman. Um, trying to dodge all the enemies. You do have an attack. You can swing your pickaxe. You can shoot your gun. Um, you get a rifle or a revolver. You pick up stuff along the way. You also can throw things like rocks and other projectiles. But yeah, that, you can lure enemies into the light and that will damage them typically uh, based on the monsters that I've seen. Um, but <laughs> that's it. Um, you're going to be doing just that and hoping that you survive the wave. And then when you're done, the game will go, okay, would you like to pick everything back up? Sure, you do that. So as long as something isn't fully damaged or whatever, you can pick it back up and use it again. Now, this is where the issue comes into play for me. This game has resources that you need to manage. There's wood and glass, primarily. The turret or turrets that you put down, you can buy more as you progress in the dungeon. You get gold and you can spend the gold in a shop to actually buy more turrets, like a glass cannon turret and so on. But the these turrets require resources for them to fire. So your, your one turret will use your, your wood. So, and you also use wood to put down your barricades. So, like, your your ammo for your turrets and your barricades have the same resource. So, you know, you're pretty much starved. And the only way to get more is to go around the current uh, room that you're in and chop up bits of things, like crates or wood on the ground, or chop up lanterns for glass. 
it, that's so monot it became so monotonous after a while. I wish there was an easier way to gain these resources without having to spend an extra minute making sure I've grabbed every single, you know, mined every single wood, piece of wood and every piece of glass from the room. And even when you do destroy something, sometimes the items are on the ground and you just forgot to walk over them and they're just sitting there. Um, sometimes rats will come out of the wall and you can hit them for, for health. Sometimes there's enemy spiders on the wall and uh, they'll just shoot at you and they're just something that you completely miss on your first playthrough and you take a lot of damage because you're not watching out for them. So, like, I, I want to like this game. I really do. It has some cool ideas, but I feel like it's only half a game on based on what I've played. I, I feel like there needs to be more to it. Um, if there were rogue light elements where there were skill trees that I could level up as I as I continue from run to run to run, make myself more powerful that way, that would be one thing. I would come back to this more often. As it stands, like I, I really hate the whole uh, wood and glass is not only your ammo for your for turrets, but also your barricades and other things. So like you're constantly starved for resources. Yeah, you can try and play smart. Like on one level, I tried to set up my barricades in such a way that would force them into a light square so that they would take damage. But they ignored that and just attacked the barricades. I'm like, well, why aren't they going around and coming at me uh, without, you know, in a, a typical tower defense game, you're putting stuff down, you're, you're forcing them along a path. I tried forcing them along a path in this game and they just, they had none of it. They were just breaking through the barricades trying to get to me quickly rather than go the long way around where my turrets were. So like this game does and doesn't have tower defense elements to it. I feel like it's trying to do a couple of things here, but does none of them very well. The combat isn't very fluid, doesn't feel nice, uh, I just, I simply don't like it. The tower defense aspect, again, one or two turrets, that's all you really get in the beginning until you get enough money to get more. I just, I wasn't feeling this one. It's, again, cool, it's, it's a cool idea, but it's just not implemented very well. So, do I recommend it? Yes, it's not bad, but I would recommend on a sale. If you can get it for like five bucks or something like that, then I would say, yeah, pick it up. But as it stands... Um, it's, it's just doesn't, doesn't grab me as much of other, as much as other games have of this particular type. If you guys haven't already subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I have to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.